the 31st, and this is your Board of Multnomah County Commissioners. The health and safety of our staff and our community are at the forefront of our minds as we continue to navigate county business in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. In accordance with the declaration of emergency, some board rules have been temporarily altered. Today's meeting is a hybrid board meeting, which means that some presenters and guests will appear in person and some will appear virtually. For those who are appearing virtually, please remember to unmute your, when you're not speaking, please mute your mic. And when you are, are speaking, please unmute your mic and make sure that your camera is on. And if all presenters would please state your name before um, you speak, that will help those who are listening remotely. May I please have a motion on the consent calendar? So moved. Second. Commissioner Vega Peterson moves. Commissioner Myron seconds. Approval of the consent calendar. Marina, would you please take a roll call vote? Uh, Commissioner Myron? Aye. Commissioner Vega Peterson? Aye. Commissioner Stegman? Aye. Chair Kafori? Aye. The consent calendar is approved. Now is the opportunity for public comment on non-agenda matters. This is a time for the board to hear public testimony, not for board deliberation. Um, when I uh, call your name, please have a seat at the dais. I'll set a timer for three minutes, and when your time is up, the people go off. Um, so we have three people signed up for public testimony. Uh, Bruce Broussard, uh, Joe DeMars, and George Carrillo. Yep, you can all three come and sit up here. Morning, Chair. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioners. Appreciate the Sharon and Jessica. Okay. Well, what we're going to do before we raise the flag this morning is that uh, just wanted to make sure that uh, we all knew and, and the viewing audience and, and whoever's listening and, and out there will know that this is National Vietnam War Veterans Day. Isn't that something? That was March the 29th. And I went to a couple of meetings and, and they, they did this. So I thought what I'd do, I'd sort of share with you as to what this was all about. There was a couple of readings in this brochure that I have, and I'll read this out to you. It says, in March 2017, the president signed into law the Vietnam War Veterans Recognition Act of 2017, designating March 29th as National Vietnam War Veterans Day, a day set aside in perpetuity for our nation to thank and honor all Vietnam veterans. And then it goes on to say from a couple of the presidents, and we deep we deep politicize the piece, <laughs> but anyway, uh, it uh, here was a couple of quotes here. One was from uh, well throughout the they said, said throughout this commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War and every March 29th thereafter, we will honor all those who answered our nation's call to duty. We vow to never again confuse personal disapproval of our of war with prejudice against those who honorably wear the uniform of our, our armed forces. With conviction, our nation pledges our enduring respect over continuing care and our everlasting commitment to all Vietnam veterans. And another quote, and one of the most painful, one of the most painful chapter in our history was Vietnam, most particularly how we treated our troops. You were often blamed for a war you didn't start when you should have been commended for serving your country with Vela, Vela. And then another one, which talks to government involvement and whatever it says, why, they, why it exists. It says the United States of America Vietnam War commemoration exists to fulfill the following five objectives to thank and honor Vietnam veterans, including former POWs and MIAs and their families, to highlight the service of our armed forces and the contributions of federal agencies, governmental and non-governmental organizations during the war, to pay tribute to wartime contributions made at home by American citizens, to highlight technology, science, and medical advance made during the, during the war, to recognize the contributions and sacrifices made by our allies, Australia, New Zealand, Philippines, the Republic of Korea, and Thailand. Just thought I'd throw a few quotes to you about that whole piece, okay, fine. Now I guess we'll do the pledge. I brought, brought a couple of 
individuals here. One, well, both of them are running for office. You know, I'm taking the advantage of. Hey, uh, Bruce, your time is up. So if you want to do a. Uh, sounds good. That, let's get the pledge. Let's yeah, right. the pledge. Well, Joe's going to do the pledge. <laughs> He's going to take his three minutes. All right. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah, so my name is Joe Demers. Uh, I'm also a candidate uh, running for the commissioner chair, so nice to meet you all, and it's good to be here. Yes, hello, everybody. Um, thank you for having me here, chair, and for the commissioners, too. My name is George Carrillo. I am a Democratic candidate for the seat for governor. I'm one of the gubernatorial candidates. So I come before you today to let all of you know that I am consistently actively participating in the community to try to make the changes that are necessary and to be able to partner with all of you to make the necessary changes. Now, our state government and the amount of money that we have, um, I believe that needs to be reformed and that we need to have better partnerships with our counties and with our community members. Understanding that the challenges that are faced today are extremely difficult. You know, we come from a place of power and privilege, and I know that because I'm a senior executive at the Oregon Health Authority, and I see how our politics comes into play and actually dilutes the money that is needed to our citizens. Monoma County has a lot of problems right now that the state can provide assistance with. We need to do so with uh, very swift action, but in a collaborative approach that actually is making changes that impacts the lives of Oregonians, not just here in Monoma County, but throughout the state. So I appreciate your time. I appreciate the fact that we are all coming together and being able to speak freely and being able to use our democracy in the way that it was intended to be done. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. I might add that he's, a, he's also a, a Marine, former Marine, so don't make sure you can get in. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for coming. It's a pleasure to meet both Thank of you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Bruce. Appreciate it. That is all the public testimony we have this morning. I will go on to R1. R1. Approving an IGA between County and the City of Portland Bureau of Parks and Recreations providing for termination of a lease and courthouse parking lot improvements for MCSO. Second. Commissioner Vega Peterson moves. <clears throat> Commissioner Myron seconds approval of R1. Good morning, good to see you. Good morning, I'm Courtney Lords with the County Attorney's Office. Before you today is an intergovernmental agreement with the City of Portland. We are seeking your approval on this. This is one of the final transactions related to the Multnomah County Courthouse. Uh, in spe in um, specificity, this IGA, excuse me, I'm tongue-tied this morning, um, will terminate a lease that was uh, entered into in 1987 with the City of Portland, specifically the Parks Bureau. And in terminating that lease as part of the consideration for it, we will be also approving in this intergovernmental agreement the um, making of parking lot improvements. And there are two parking lot improvements that you'll see in this intergovernmental agreement. The one that is tied to the courthouse is to provide secured parking lot for the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office. This is to allow um, safe uh, import and export of the detainees into the courthouse. The second piece is um, parking lot improvements that will benefit parks. Um, and so that will allow them to make up for the loss of space that they are giving up for the MCSO lot. And then we will move that to another part um, near the courthouse. If there are specific questions regarding the um, improvements or the project, I've got JD in the audience here who's happy to come up and answer any of those. If you have questions related to the legal nature of this, I'm happy to answer those. Any questions? Thank you, Courtney. <clears throat> Marina, do we receive any public testimony on this item? No, Madam Chair. All right, commissioners, I'm gonna call on commissioners by district to see who has questions or comments, and we'll start with Commissioner Myron. Thank you, I do not have any questions. Commissioner Vega Peterson. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Courtney, good to see you in person. Um, no questions, it just, um, it's always amazing how long these, these things go on. So maybe this is the last one, maybe we'll have someone more before us, thanks. Commissioner Segman. Thank you, Chair, good morning, Courtney. I do have a question, so how many parking spaces will we be receiving? 
I cannot answer that, so I'm going to ask JD to come up and respond to that. You knew you were, you were going to get a question. <laughs> Uh, good, good morning, Chair. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, J.D. Desha, Multnomah County Facilities Project Manager for the Courthouse. Eight years, six months, and still counting? Uh, so, Commissioner, it's uh, parking for three of the transport vehicles for the Chair's office, and there's an additional four parking spots available, one for facilities and the rest for other uh, Sheriff's vehicles. Okay, great. Uh, and so I was trying to, could you refresh my memory, J.D.? It's been a while since I toured, but there's like a sally port, is that right? Correct. Can you just kind of talk about like how those two things interact and the uses of each? Absolutely. So the sally port is used for the, uh, the bringing in of the in-custody defendants, and then they are uh, let out of that vehicle, and then they're brought into the holding cells on the ground floor. So the reason why we want to, we need the uh, secure parking nearby is that in an emergency situation, uh, the sheriff needs to be able to evacuate all the in-custody defendants. And there is no parking beside the building, so they need, within close proximity, a parking lot so that they could immediately come over, uh, put all of the in-custody defendants safely into the vehicle in the sally port, and then take them to the Inverness jail. That makes perfect sense. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. You're welcome. All right, Marina, will you please take a roll call vote? Commissioner Myron? Aye. Commissioner Vega Peterson? Aye. Commissioner Stegman? Aye. Chair Kafori? Aye. The IG is approved. Thank you. Thank you. R2, proclaiming March 30th, 2002, as Transgender Day of Visibility Community in Multnomah County, Oregon. Commissioner Vega Peterson moves. Commissioner Myron seconds. Approve. <coughs> Goodness, allergies this morning. Sorry. Approval of R2. Commissioner, would you like to kick it off, please? I would love to. So, hello, everyone. Happy Trans Day of Visibility. Trans Day of Visibility is a day to celebrate trans identity and embrace and uplift trans. Uh, like, I do need my glasses, as it turns out. Um, trans people at the fullest of their intersections. As the mom of two transgender non-conform transgender non-conforming teens, I see every day that trans identity is synonymous with beauty, family, love, thoughtfulness, questioning, thinking, um, depth, compassion, uh, and. I am so excited and grateful to have the opportunity to introduce our presenters who will help speak to the importance of today's proclamation. And I'll quickly announce who each speaker is, then call on our first presenter and help facilitate the transitions between presenters. <laughs> um, the first to speak is uh, the amazing Mickey Gillette, a local playwright and major gifts officer for Basic Rights Oregon. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Mickey Gillette. Um, my pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm the major gifts officer at Basic Rights Oregon. Thank you for recognizing Trans Day of Visibility today and for inviting me to speak. As you may know, Trans Day of Visibility was initiated by activists in 2009 to help celebrate our community and bring light to the challenges many of our members face. As we've all witnessed the past few years, the increase of invisibility experienced by trans people in the US has come with a dangerous backlash. Cruel, cynical politicians and conservative-led state houses across the country are pursuing policies to prevent trans youth from participating in sports and to prohibit them from accessing life-saving trans-affirming healthcare. These hateful acts only add to the difficulties of a community whose members already experience unemployment, poverty, and homelessness at rates far greater than their cisgender peers. Given this stark landscape, I would respectfully ask that you reflect today on how you can weave transgender equity into all the policies you pursue for the county. When I transitioned in 2011, people attempted to have me fired from my job. They did so publicly by going to the media to pressure my employer. 
I was only, uh, it was only because people who'd come before me had passed non-discrimination protections for trans people that I was able to retain my position, have a stable income, complete my transition, and change careers to pursue advocacy as I do today. Trans people around the country view Multnomah County as a haven, and many of them will likely feel compelled to leave the cities and states they live in currently as they're being actively demonized by their elected leaders. As we celebrate the trans community today, I'd ask you to consider what measures could be taken to ensure trans people are protected from discrimination and harassment in the county and the areas of housing, healthcare, education, employment, and homeless services. I'm proud to live in Multnomah County, and I'm grateful that when it came time for me to transition, I was able to do so here. I also know that I'm one of the lucky ones, and that many members of my community have struggled in the same place I've thrived. One only need glance at the news to see that the playing field isn't even for trans people in our society. And as we celebrate Trans Day of Visibility, I ask us to all consider what we can do to help change that. Thanks again. Thank you, it's good to see you this morning. And thank you so much, Mickey, and um, the Next person that we are going to hear from is is Malo uh, Alai Malo Alai Ilima, and I apologize uh, for that. But the board president of Pride Northwest and the co-founder of Utopia PDX. Thank you, Malo. <laughs> Myron Peterson Mustagman, Pafatai Fo'i, Ya Gomesina Myron, Mole Taulia, Fifia, Lava U, Le Valla Aulia. Loingo, Man Malo, Al Elima, Pot Malo, a five fat pu pu, Maua, Le Fatonisa, more. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Chair Kofori and Commissioners uh, Myron Peterson and Stagman. Uh, I thank you gladly for the invitation and to your staff for coordinating the logistical details for this presentation. Warm Pacific greetings. For the record, my name is Manmalo Ali Ilima. I am known as Malo for short, and I identify as Fa'atane, which means in the manner of a man in Samoan, or a transgender man. My pronouns are Oya, he, him, his. I am currently the board president of Pride Northwest, the horse host organization of Portland Pride, which this incredible organization has coordinated Portland Pride parade and festival for over 25 years. I am also a co-founder and former executive director of the United Territories of Pacific Islanders Alliance Portland or Utopia PDX, which provides sacred spaces to strengthen the minds and bodies of cutie pies or queer and transgender Pacific Islanders through community organizing, political engagement, and cultural stewardship, which will be turning five years old in just two weeks. I had to take a career pivot in order to help care for my 86-year-old dad. In my culture, it is considered the utmost honor and privilege to take care of our elderly parents. And so to accommodate these life shifts, I am currently a business owner of Pacifica Impact LLC, which provides innovative strategies with respect to DEI training and curriculum approaches. For more than a month, my family has been hit hard with funerals, seven to be exact. One funeral every week since the end of February, uh, two last weekend that didn't overlap, two this weekend whereby I leave tonight and will be missing one of them to attend this particular one that's out of state. <clears throat> And one more funeral next weekend. If you remember last year when we had the Asian American and Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander proclamation last May, I had shared that I had lost five family members. And there was a period in, la in the latter half of um, 2021 when it subsided. However, it rose again this year. So I haven't even properly grieved. And there are specific staff people from Commissioner Jayapal's office, like Sarah and Monique, and from Chair Kofori's office, Liam, that I need to extend my apologies in that I have been overwhelmed with co 
coordinating family obligations and providing as safe as possible cultural protocols during these funerals. Since my elderly father is not as healthy as he used to be, I have been tasked or rather volunteered by my father and siblings as I am the youngest in our family to assume his chiefly duties in his stead, which is huge shoes to fill. And it's not just because he has large feet as I do. <laughs> All this to say is that transgender day of visibility is so important to me that I take a few moments to be a part of this proclamation, even though I'm going through another tragic and difficult time personally. But I also want to share some really wonderful work that has happened in our transgender community here in Multnomah County. Pride Northwest is the fiscal sponsor of Greater Portland Trans Unity that has been working on the Trans Housing Alliance and has played a part in the C3PO Queer Alliance Village. Utopia PDX has been providing safe and welcoming COVID-19 testing and vaccine clinics, food, distribu uh, food, food distribution and rental assistance to the transgender community in addition to the Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander and other BIPOC communities. Black and Beyond the Binary Collective is in partnership with JOIN and has also provided housing options for our transgender and BIPOC communities. Some things I'd like to see support from Multnomah County moving forward. Funding support to convene an LGBTQ plus coalition or alliance of community based organizations. Funding support to have a central hub for LGBTQ led organizations that provide direct services. Funding to support an LGBTQ summit to discuss major issues impacting the transgender community with our local electeds. Revisit hiring practices and processes to be inclusive transgender representation. Invest in transgender inclusion training for incumbent and new hire training. Revisit procurement process to reduce antiquated obstacles for LGBTQ organizations to apply for RFPs and for LGBTQ plus firms to bid for vendor contracts. Please also invest and enforce when possible in data collection, analysis, and evaluation for SOGI, sexual orientation and gender identity, to help inform parties on making good decisions with respect to the transgender community. I will leave you with this Samoan proverb, the fishing net is knotted at night, but entangled in the morning. The meaning addresses periods of transition, change, transformation will resolve itself when we make time and space for that resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Malo. I appreciate um, you being here this morning and please your uh, personal um, responsibilities far outweigh the work that you would be doing. So do, you do, you, no need to apologize to our staff. They completely understand and we are here to support you 100%. Thank you. <clears throat> and um, finally, um, we are going to hear from Stacy Rice. Stacy runs her own consulting firm, Stacy Rice Consulting, and recently partnered with the county's Aging, Disability, and Veterans Services Department to increase participation of transgender and non-binary older adults in our countywide aging survey. I also want to highlight ADV, um, ADVSD employee Lynn Shemmer-Vello is here with us to support Stacy. If there are any survey-related questions, anyone on the dais might have. So um, thank you, Stacy. Go up, you can go ahead. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here today. I'm Stacy Rice. I use she and her pronouns. I'm a trans woman who transitioned over uh, 20 years ago, actually 22 years ago. I moved to Portland 10 years ago in Multnomah County because I could see that this was going to be a, a wonderful place to be as a trans person, and that's been my experience since I moved here. Uh, deep thanks to the county today for highlighting the trans community on this day of visibility. Uh, there was a Gallup survey that was done last year 
that as people who they knew who was LGBTQ plus, uh, and the results were maybe not too surprising, but somewhat, 87% said they knew someone who was gay or lesbian. Only 31% of the folks who had been surveyed said they knew someone who was transgender. It's a pretty big gap. And some, I think there's some reasons for that. One is, is that trans folks do face a higher risk of violence. Uh, so just for safety's sake, you're not probably sharing who you are with folks. Uh, or maybe you're like me when I live back in North Carolina, uh, there are no protections there at all for trans folks or LGBTQ folks. And uh, I never was out at work uh, because I could get fired. And uh, so there's lots of reasons why we decide to uh, not be out front in community. Uh, so I deeply appreciate this day and highlighting our lives and our journeys. It's so important. So thank you so much for doing that. And uh, last uh, thing I want to highlight in my time is actually the, the work that Sharon just mentioned that uh, Tosh Schatz and I did uh, in um, interviewing trans elders uh, to get their feedback. Uh, when the last area plan was uh, was kind of reviewed, uh, it was found that there was a, a huge lack of trans representation, such as trans elders in that work. So the ADVSD uh, put a priority on actually hearing from trans elders and their experiences, uh, the issues they have faced, the disparities, the services that are needed, and um, it was an incredibly lovely experience. Tosh and I, we got a chance to interview folks um, that were trans elders, hearing their beautiful stories. Uh, it was during the pandemic, well, the, 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 the height of the pandemic, and as someone who's been socially isolated deeply, uh, it was wonderful for my heart and soul to hear these amazing stories of resilience uh, from these trans elders and what they've had to go through and had to experience. And I uh, really appreciate uh, ADVSD uh, highlighting um, those stories. I mean, I think older adults and elders are kind of invisible in lots of ways too, but compound that would be in transgender. And there's so many other layers to that. And so it's wonderful as a trans elder myself, it's taken me a while to, <laughs> to claim the elder, like when I am 64 <laughs> years old. So uh, I transitioned 22 years ago. Uh, it's lovely that this work has been included. I look deeply forward to, there were a number of incredibly wonderful uh, recommendations of how to service the trans elder community. And I look forward to the county, uh, you know, pushing those recommendations through. And, uh, and, and I can't wait to see the work that's gonna come out of this. And I'll just leave you with a quote. Um, there were so many quotes from the um, from the interviewees, but uh, this one just touched me deeply. And uh, one of the participants said, when I think of this community, the trans community, it is the community that can offer so much to the rest of the world. And I think that is deeply true. So thank you for having me here today, thanks. Thank you, Stacy. Are you going to read the proclamation? Um, you I, know, I, think I'm I believe oh, that Mr. Vega Peterson. Right. Proclamation first, and then comments. Sure. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks everyone for being here. So I will read the proclamation. Proclaiming March thirty first, two thousand twenty two, Transgender Day of Visibility in Multnomah County. The Multnomah County Board of Commissioners finds March 31st marks International Transgender gender Day of Visibility, a day to celebrate and elevate the voices and contributions of our gender expansive community of transgender, two-spirit, non-binary, and intersex people, among others, here in Multnomah County. This day is dedicated to celebrating the accomplishments and the victories of our gender expansive community while raising awareness of the work that still needs to be done to address anti-transgender violence and achieved lived equality. 
Members of the gender expansive community of Multnomah County have actively engaged in every aspect of life in our community, yet continue to face discrimination, harassment, and violence at rates much higher than cisgender community members. We recognize that these levels of hate and violence disproportionately affect trans femme individuals, particularly those who are black, Latinx, indigenous, and other trans femmes of color. Across the United States, members of the gender expansive community are facing attacks on their humanity. From Texas's order to report any, parent, um, any parents of youth receiving gender affirming medical care, to Florida's Don't Say Gay Bill, which seeks to prohibit discussions about gender identity and sexual orientation in classrooms. Multnomah County is committed to supporting our gender expansive community members and pushing back on policies and rhetoric which seeks to challenge the existence and humanity of members of the gender expansive community wherever they occur. Multnomah County and the Office of Diversity and Equity are committed to honoring the contributions of our gender expansive employees as we try, strive for a workplace that fosters safety, trust, and belonging. As we inclusively lead with race, we recognize that our BIPOC gender expansive employees face unique dual barriers due to institutional racism and transphobia. Multnomah County will continue to translate our, action, our values into action, lifting up and prioritizing the needs of our gender expansive community as we seek to ensure every community member can access the services and resources they need. The Multnomah County Board of Commissioners proclaims, March 31st, 2022, Transgender Day of Visibility in Multnomah County, Oregon, and with this proclamation, affirms commitment to support our gender expansive community. Thank you. All right, uh, commissioners, I'm sure you all have comments that you would like to make, so we'll start with Commissioner Stegman. Thank you, Chair. What a wonderful proclamation, and I wanna thank Commissioner Myron, uh, just know that um, we all uh, support you and your incredible, wonderful family, and uh, so appreciate so appreciative of your leadership and speaking out and honoring uh, Transgender Day of Visibility. Thank you, Mickey, Mala, and Stacy. Uh, I was reading something about the last year was one of the most anti-transgender years in state legislation throughout the country with 34 states introducing more than 140 anti-transgender bills. We all know how backwards, discriminatory, and exclusionary that type of legislation is. And I just want uh, folks out there in the community to know, especially our transgender youth and adults, uh, that we, we see you, we love you, and we are here for you. Uh, Multnomah County, I'm so proud of the work that we do and that we are such, we strive to be such an inclusive and diverse and equitable employer and community for everyone. And I'm just so honored to be a part of that. Uh, Malo, thank you for your, your suggestions and requests and, and demands to have more specific, culturally specific opportunities to engage with the, the county. I think those are wonderful suggestions. And Stacy, wow, what a, what a role model. Uh, and talking to trans elders and being able to reflect and share that, that vision and seeing you uh, and the grace that you bring to your position. Um, it's just, you're just really such a wonderful role model to so many out there that are struggling. Uh, and so anyway, I just wanna appreciate all of you for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Vega Peterson. Thank you, Chair. Um, so I wanna start off by thanking Mickey Mallow and Stacy for being here today. And I wanna thank Commissioner Myron and all of our fellow commissioners um, and their staff for working together to sponsor today's proclamation. This is actually something that's coming from the whole board because I think all of us feel so strongly about um, the importance of this proclamation. And I, it's something, it's a proclamation that I'm always so grateful for because I think it's so important for our board to take this opportunity to celebrate our um, trans, gender non-binary, two-spirit, and other men members of our gender expansive communities. Um, 
And specifically, I'm so grateful for the stories that our presenters shared with us today. Mickey, thank you for all of your advocacy work, for sharing your talents with us, um, your story, and, and then your gifts with um, what you're doing. Um, and I'm so glad to hear that your play is doing so well um, and getting this, such rave reviews. So um, thank you so much for being here today and for all you do at Basic Rights. Malo, um, thank you so much for sharing your story and for being here with um, when you have so much going on with your family. I'm truly sorry to hear that. Um, and I appreciate um, that you use this opportunity not just to, to share your story and talk about the needs of the community, but really make some concrete asks of what we can do at Multnomah County to further um, serve the trans and gender expandive communities. I really appreciate that. I think that's always such an important thing. And, um, and Stacy, it was so wonderful to see you. I have to say, I remember um, meeting you for the first time, and I think you had just recently moved um, here to Oregon and to Portland and I remember just talking with you and being so grateful because of your warmth and your and your brightness and just thinking that she is going to be such an asset to, to have here in Portland and that has been so true with all the work that you've done in the years since you've been here so it's great to see you today um, one of the reasons I think it's so important that we take time to celebrate our gender expansive community is because over the past few years, we've had far too few times to celebrate, and that's exactly what this proclamation is supposed to be, a celebration of the contributions, presence, and voices of our trans and non-binary community members. Um, and as we heard in the proclamation, um, our trans and gender expansive communities remain under attack in so many parts of this country. We talked about um, the proclamation um, referred to what has been happening in Texas, where parents are getting um, social services called on them for um, getting the care that their child needs to have um, gender affirming treatments from their, from their doctors. And Florida's don't say gay bill, and to Governor DeSantos, all I have to say is gay, gay, gay. Um, I want us to say loud and clear exactly what these policies are. They're shameful attempts to win political points by otherizing some of our most vulnerable in, um, individuals in our community, children and teens who are just beginning to realize their full selves. Hateful policies like that are never going to be welcome here in Multnomah County, and I'm proud to know that every member of this board stands completely in solidarity against these policies. So today is a, a time to celebrate our trans, non-binary, and gender expansive communities because every day we, um, we benefit from their contributions and their presence here. We also know that there are many ways in which we can better support our trans and non-binary employees and better serve those members of the community, and I'm committed to working in partnership with all of you to understand what we can do better and then follow through and turn those words into actions. So thank you so much. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Myron. Thank you so much to just each and every one of you um, today on our panel for being here. Um, Mickey, as I said earlier, it is just so wonderful to see you here in person, and I really appreciate your comments. You're elevating the challenges and barriers and the hateful acts that have been increasing in our country that um, have Commissioner Stegman, Commissioner Vega Peters, and that we are all so um, horrified by and uh, that we need to be um, constantly speaking out against. And, and also just sort of noting that in your experience that you're one of the lucky ones and, um, and so many people just aren't so lucky and especially people with um, intersections in identity, um, depending on your geographic. I mean, so much that is rolled into this. And um, I also really appreciate that you um, really emphasized coming together and just in the work you do in the community. It's about advocacy. It's about community. It's about bringing people together and um, transcending. And I didn't think about use of trans and transcending and I was writing and I was like, oh, that's a great word. Um, and also just have to also call out your work as a playwright. Um, I too am really excited my family is going to your play tomorrow evening. So um, encourage anyone watching uh, the queers, Google it um, and uh, very excited for that. So, um, and Malo, uh, I just am really grateful to you for being here 
especially right now. I mean, I, I just can't, I can't get my mind around the seven funerals. Um, so I just want you to know um, that I am sending just deep thoughts of uh, healing and support from the bottom of my heart and really am grateful that you are you were able to come and speak to us today and that you prioritize that. Um, and also, as Commissioner um, Vega Peterson mentioned, I really love that you, you really uplifted some concrete things that we can do as a board and ways that we can be supportive and where we can invest our resources um, to help the community. And so look forward to delving into that. And then um, Stacy, I, it was just so amazing to see you and I too remember when I first met you I think like I I feel like I'd seen your name in all sorts of emails because you were the like the email voice for um for an organization it's like Stacy Rice Stacy Rice and when I actually met you it was like oh my gosh it's like meeting a legend and you were um just so warm and uh kind then and that just you can feel it still from uh even from the internet, whatever, our virtual reality world. So um, thank you for being here and elevating that voice of trans elders. And then also, um, Lynn, for being here and talking about the work, the, that work of ADVSD, our Aging Disability Veterans Service Division, that is so important and is able to, um, to reach out and get the kind of information that can inform the work that we do here at the county. So um, really, really loved seeing all of you. And, you know, as I mentioned earlier, uh, as the mom of two trans youth, um, I, I don't know if I'd be in jail, if I'd be arrested, who has provided um, their support, their care, um, medical services uh, that is gender affirming to them. Uh, you know, the, the thought, it, it, it is very real. Um, uh, and I want my children to have limitless opportunities to live a long and joyful life and to be loved exactly for who they are. Um, and I want this for every trans person in our community, trans, queer, gender, non-binary people in our community. So um, a few more thanks that I just have to give. Um, I want to thank Maya Noble from the Office of Diversity and Equity. A huge shout out to Hayden Miller from uh, Commissioner Vega Peterson's office um, for just all that you do every day and especially coming around um, this, this particular proclamation. Monique Smiley from Commissioner Jayapal's office, Jennifer Lewis from Commissioner Stegman's office, Allison Conkling from the chair's office, and um, Tabitha Pitzer from my office, uh, who has done so much work. Um, and all of you have poured in so much love and effort into making this proclamation be the best that it can. And as Commissioner Vega Peterson said, it is sponsored by all members of the board because we are all um, so profoundly um, uh, supportive of this work. I also want to thank employee resource groups, um, QT POC, and also PRISON, and, uh, and all our trans, queer, gender, non-binary, um, non-conforming employees, and especially, though, the resource groups for providing resources and support for our county employees. Thank you. Not sure that there's a whole lot to say to add to what my colleagues have, have said. I, I really appreciate their work on this proclamation. I appreciate um, Stacy, Malo, and Mickey for coming this morning. Um, especially nice to see you in person. Um, thank thank um, all of our staff and that have worked on this uh, proclamation as well. I am so just so proud today, as many days, to work at Multnomah County, where we value all community members and. I, I do believe, I think Commissioner um, Vega Peterson's talked about this, we have made some great strides at the county. We know we have a long way to go, and it is by our close relationship working with community members that we are able to make the changes that are necessary. So um, we have more, more to do. You will see more from this um, commission in the years to come, 
but it's with uh, the partnership of our community whom we value greatly. So thank you all of you for coming this morning. And Marina, will you please take a roll call vote? Commissioner Myron? Aye. Commissioner Vega-Peterson? Aye. Commissioner Stegman? Aye. Chair Kafori. Aye. The proclamation is adopted. Well, that it was a very short but important agenda we had this morning. Appreciate everyone for coming. And now we have time for board comments on any non-agenda items. And I'm going to start with Commissioner Myron. Thank you, Chair. Um, this evening, I will be sending out my March newsletter. So if you're not on my listserv, uh, you can find the link to sign up on my county website. Also, um, uh, just with regard to resources um, available for uh, for trans um, LGBTQIA plus members of our community, um, there are a lot of resources on the county website. I also have a list that I'll be posting on my website as well, um, so you can link to that. And the finally, um, if you haven't noticed the cherry blossoms next to the current old town chinatown which was also known as japantown are in full bloom and they were a gift from japan for the dedication of the japanese american historical plaza in 1990. the plaza was created to raise public awareness of the diversity of cultural experiences in america before world war ii a lot of japanese immigrants lived and worked in that area but during the war, over 120,000 Japanese Americans were sent to internment camps, including about 4,000 in Oregon. So as you walk among the blossoms, I encourage you to reflect on our nation's history, our local history, and our shared vision for, for a more inclusive, just, and loving future. That's it. Commissioner Vega peterson Thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted to share, and I think my member, many of my colleagues are also going to be joining um, this weekend. It's Transition Project's um, Impact Gala on Saturday evening. It is their 50th anniversary, um, and you can find out information about um, this event at um, tprojects.org. We have um, a really strong partnership with um, the work that Transition Projects does, and I think this is going to be a great um, time to celebrate all of that work and their decades of um, um, of impact that they've had in our community. Thank you. <laughs> it is older than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Commissioner Stegman. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Myron, for bringing up the Japanese internment. Uh, that is a very important history for us to remember and recognize, and also to marvel at the beauty of the cherry blossoms. Uh, I did uh, want to remind folks, I think probably many of my fellow board, uh, board of County Commissioners will be attending the Q Center's events uh, for Transgender Day of Visibility. I know that they have events from like 12 noon until eight o'clock tonight. Uh, there's gonna be an art gala, there's gonna be spoken word and karaoke. So I hope the com community can come out and support the rest of the community. Thank you. Thank you. And that concludes our regular board meeting. We will be back here next Tuesday at 10 a.m. for our board briefing. <laughs> See you then. Have a nice weekend. Stay safe, stay healthy. <laughs>